you're looking for a professional plumber, and if you find one, the work quality is marginal. You're looking for a good electrician, and if you find one, they're expensive. You see a building construction site that is likely behind schedule. The list goes on and on. Now, the main reason for all of this is a shortage of skilled labor. And, you know, you probably know most of these reasons, the retiring workforce, uh, perhaps students are disinterested, maybe because of the stigma associated with uh, skilled trades sometimes. But nevertheless, I would call the examples I, I gave you as essentially um, inconveniences, I guess you would say. Um, some worse than others, of course. Now, there's one occupation where a deficit in the workforce could cause a, a more serious outcome. And I'm referring to the technicians in the heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration industry, known as HVAC. Um, and the outcome I'm referring to can have an effect on global warming. Now, you might ask, what does global warming have to do with education? When you hear those two things, you might think that I'm about to talk about how important it is to teach grade schoolers how to recycle. But this is a lot bigger. Um, the industry in which I work for many years now has been trying to reduce the greenhouse emissions. And even with all that hard work, the, um, I call it, I guess, the educational training infrastructure in the US is not adequate enough to give us the amount of employees we need and quickly enough so that we can put our fix into place. So uh, that's a big deal for all of us, really. Um, now, what I'd like to do is maybe just go over some technical points. So as you probably know, there are man-made and natural greenhouse gases, from CO2, from electrical power plants, to naturally occurring water vapor. And yes, methane. <laughs> from our friends. <clears throat> but now, not all of these greenhouse gases are alike as far as their damaging effect. Uh, some of them linger longer in the atmosphere, and some of them are simply more potent. And you hear a lot about CO2, and rightly so, because it is the largest contributor. Uh, but it's because of the quantity of CO2, not necessarily the potency of it. There are some gases that are thousands of times more potent than CO2. Now, there's one greenhouse gas you don't, that doesn't get too much press. And it's the one that keeps your food preserved and your house is cool in the summer. Of course, I'm talking about refrigerants. And so how the industry ranks the greenhouse gases is that uh, it's a metric called global warming potential. And CO2 is arbitrarily given a value of one, and then all other gases are rated relative to it. So you can see R410A is a, a very common refrigerant. It's likely in your house right now, is over 2,000 times more potent or damaging than CO2. And the um, I guess you would call the accidental release rate or emissions of fluorocarbons, particularly refrigerants, is on the rise year over year. And it's mainly because of the use of refrigeration and air conditioning is on the rise year over year. And now it's especially relevant uh, globally and in developing countries especially, uh, many of which are in hot climates. Okay, so why don't we just replace these refrigerants and be done with it? I mean, in fact, there have been discoveries of acceptable refrigerants um, as far as you know, low global warming refrigerants. However, uh, like many things in life, there's a double-edged sword, and 
it turns out that most of these new refrigerants are in fact flammable. Now, you might ask, you know, is that a big deal? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, we, we deal with flammable gases in our houses all the time, right? We, we cook with it and we heat our houses with it. Uh, you know, natural gas, methane, uh, and propane. However, refrigerants are different. Uh, they are under much higher pressure. And also, they are not odorized like those other gases. They don't have a smell. So a leak in your house would essentially go undetected. So now that I've scared you, <laughs> I'd really like you to have peace of mind, though, because <laughs> There is an established and comprehensive process that we have to go through to make sure the equipment that goes in your house and in buildings is, in fact, safe. Um, in fact, this is where I come in. I've been in, I guess you would call it, fairly conventional engineering field for 35 years. But in the last six years, I've been involved with this process. And it's actually been an honor for me. Um, now. I, this, this wasn't meant to be read, of course, uh, but um, I wanted to just give you sort of an appreciation of the general steps involved. Each one of these boxes represents a bunch of experts working on a particular project or problem. In the middle of that yellow box is um, the research that's been going on to understand the properties of all these new refrigerants. And that research is shared, the results of the research, shared with the boxes on top and bottom, which are standards committees, safety standards committees. And then as you move to the right, the building codes and the fire codes people adopt information from those standards to incorporate in their codes so that safe building practices can be performed. And there's an international version of that, too, the green boxes on the bottom. That's very similar to the, the process in the US. OK, there's one, I guess you would call it a, um, a consequence that, that comes out of this process. Uh, the equipment is a little more complicated, and in a good way, actually. There will be safety features now incorporated into the equipment such that if there is a leak in your house, a fire cannot occur. Now, all of this kind of underscores the need, the general need for having HVAC technicians that are trained and educated because not only do they have to deal with flammable refrigerants now during installation and repair, but they also have to deal with you know, the, the equipment that's slightly more complex. So it may require a higher skill level. Now, um, moving a little to the education part of it, uh, where does all the foundational uh, educational information come from? Uh, for instance, you know, the curricula and the standardized exams and all of that. Um, fortunately, we have that covered. Uh, there are trade organizations out there uh, that are doing just that. Nate is one of them, and they are preparing uh, standardized exams that incorporates the flammable refrigerant information into it. And um, there are also trade organizations out there that are uh, de developing materials for trainers, for instructors, too. So now, as far as the <clears throat> educational institutions, the HVAC training <clears throat> excuse me, has been offered typically across the spectrum of schools up to and including four-year colleges. However, there aren't really enough, uh, I would say, formalized, uh, accredited institutions teaching this. We need more of them. And this is probably a good point to, to mention that this, this particular skill trade uh, is pretty technical. 
I mean, it, it involves uh, chemistry, physics, electronics, software. And there are some of us that believe that the HVAC science should, in fact, be included into STEM programs in schools. Now, just to put some numbers on what I was mentioning, the shortfall, there was one survey that showed that by 2022, there's going to be over 100,000 employee deficit in this field. And the salaries are pretty good. They're, they're high for the skilled labor field in general. <clears throat> and uh, with this kind of demand, I would say that that will probably continue in the future. <clears throat> now, as far as tuition, <clears throat> look at that number. I mean, uh, that's the total tuition. That's not a yearly value. And if an employee gets into an apprenticeship program with a, a company, uh, they, there's a good chance that the company may even pay for that. So now, moving forward, uh, there are just some ideas on what we can do to help. We need to increase student awareness <clears throat> about the HVAC profession. We need to create clear pathways for students to enter the skilled trades in general. We need to provide programmatic and accredited training institutions. And we need to increase corporate partnering and participation on advisory boards. And we need to consider expanding the scope of STEM programs to include HVAC and other relevant skilled trades. And this last item, I guess you would say, is outside of the control of the educational community, but it's in, it is important. We need to establish more uniform certification and licensing requirements from region to region in the United States. Right now, it's all over the board as far as what's required of these workers and contractors, too. And there is a timing challenge. Right now, the um, new refrigerants are going to be phased in between 2021 and 2028. So um, it looks like the guy with the wrench may in fact save our planet. So <laughs> thank you very much. <clears throat>